Hey guys, welcome back to my channel. I am coming at you again with another full face of Jane Iredell because there are some new products and I honestly never don't like my look. I know that was a double negative when I use Jane Iredell. Like if I have a comment from a video way back when and I click on the video and I'm like, oh wow, my skin looks good. And I go look at what I used, Jane Iredell every single time they're finally done with our barn they're packing up all the equipment and zeus is having a fit it just works out that way every single time just got my hair trimmed yesterday and whenever that happens i always have these little pieces that will not go up and they bother me so much all right i'm going to start with foundation and in my last full face i used the new bb cream and today i'm going to use the beyond matte liquid foundation which I absolutely love. I'm in the shade M8, and I like to use this one with a sponge, and I don't usually bring my sponge out anymore. I just really have loved using a brush, but every time I get this out, I pull for a sponge, and I love how it looks, so that's what we're gonna do. Just gonna apply that. If you are new to my channel, and you don't know my love for Jane Iredell, it is a very strong love. There's not much they put out that I don't adore this foundation is marketed as matte but it really isn't it's more of a satin matte natural skin like finish which i think you'll be able to see once it is all blended into the skin see what i mean that is not a matte foundation but it is the one that i would choose if you have oily skin from the jane ardell line and don't want to do a powder foundation I would choose this one because even though it doesn't have a matte finish, the longevity is like a matte foundation. I mean, it is super long wearing. So definitely one to check out if you are more on the combo oily side. I went ahead and put on my Chantecaille Stilo pen before I remembered about my Enlightened Plus concealer that I love as a corrector. So I ended up just using this duo, which I talk about in my under eye video. I will link it because I want the Jane Iredell pen that comes like this, the concealer, I don't have it, but ever since I have been embracing a lighter coverage under my eyes, I really wanna go back to that and revisit it because it is a good one. It just doesn't have a ton of coverage. All right, let's go ahead and do the rest of the cream products. And this is where the newness comes in from Jane Iredell. They have launched, and I'm gonna put the exact date in the description box, because I can't remember. As of the time I am filming this, they have not launched yet. But I will put the date, again, in the description box when they do. But they have new blush sticks and new bronzer sticks. So if y'all remember, last year they came out with blush and highlighter sticks. And it was like really on the highlighty side. All the blushes, most of the blushes had like a, sh a sheen to them or a shimmer. And obviously the highlighting sticks did as well. And it was all about that glow. This is more of a matte collection. I'm gonna start out by swatching the three new bronzer shades. These are very rough swatches. <laughs> obviously they're gonna be blended out better on the skin. Right here we have Scorch, which is definitely a more olive toned. It, it has that green in it. And then in the middle is Blaze, which is, I would say the darkest of all, and it's definitely a more red undertone. And then over here is more of a warm tone, and this is Sizzle. And Sizzle is what I'm going to use today. So Sizzle is described as a golden bronze, ideal for light to medium skin tones. Oh, and I'm looking on the Jane Ardell site. It says available 822. I get all of my Jane from Harbin House and she might have them quicker. So definitely check. I will link them if I can find them. So again, none of these have any kind of shimmer in them. They are fully matte, as you can probably see from the swatches. <clears throat> and I'm gonna use this like I do any other cream stick product. I do not go and paint stripes on my face. It's fine if that's the way you wanna do it. I find that it's harder to blend out that way and it doesn't look as soft and it can disturb some of the foundation you have underneath. So what I like to do is take it directly from the stick. Now you can do one of two things. You can take a flat foundation brush. This is from Jane Iredell and you can really pack it on and then kind of apply it where you want and then blend it out. 
or you can take a kabuki brush, which I like to do. This is the Hourglass Vanish foundation brush, and I like to really apply the product on the brush and then blend it into the skin. This is a very soft color, which I actually love. See how easily that blended out? It's not giving any more. That sheen on my forehead is from really just my skincare and the foundation. So, so easy to just tap that in and it gives that really soft, subtle bronze, which I really appreciate for someone who always overdoes it. Look at how pretty that is. Now let's go on to the blush. They've come out with five new blush colors and again, no shimmer, all matte. The first is called Afterglow, which is described as a bright coral pink. So that's Afterglow. And then there is Balmy, which is described as a berry rose. Ember, which is a bright raspberry. This is a gorgeous shade. Smolder, which is a warm nude rose. Might be my favorite. But then we've got the last one, which is called Fervor. And this is described as a bubblegum pink. Look how pretty that is. So those are the five new shades with no shimmer. They are not flat matte, they're cream products. So they're gonna catch the light a little bit differently than a powder product would, but they don't have any added shimmer. So I'm gonna go in with this one because I'm doing more of a cool toned look today on my eyes. So I wanna reach for a more pink shade. So this is Fervor, which is that bubblegum pink. So I'm gonna take, this is my Royal and Langnickel Omnia BOM 185 brush which is my favorite for cream blush. And I'm just going to that product. I'm gonna start up right on the cheek. And I've said many times with cream blush, I tend to bring it down more on the cheek, like closer to my nose than I would bring a powder blush. Don't ask me why, but it tends to work out. I really like that color. All right, let's let all the creams sink in to the skin while we work on the eyes. And I pulled out three of my trios. The last full face, I used one trio, and then I used one of the six pan palettes, and I decided to showcase more of the trios. So I'm gonna start with the trio in Cognac. And this is, I believe, very similar to triple Cognac in the old trios. And it's got one shimmer, which is very similar to Allure and then two mattes. I'm gonna take this middle matte shade and use that for my crease on a Sigma crease brush. These do have really good sized mirrors in them. Just carve out a crease with that matte shade. I'm gonna go into Pink Quartz, which is a very pretty, it's got one like satin matte shade and then two shimmer shades. I'm gonna go in with this middle shimmer shade and this is on a Jane Ardell chisel shader. And I'm going to pack that on the lid. Just, just a really pretty subtle sheen pink shade. And just for a little bit of definition, I'm gonna take this purple shade and just put it just a little bit in this outer corner. It's very soft. It'd be really pretty all over the lid, but I like the just little bit of shadow that it creates on the outer corner. And then I'm gonna go into Ravishing, which I'm pretty sure I used Ravishing in my last. I used this gold shade, but I'm gonna use that really, really gorgeous purple shade in the middle for eyeliner, because I just think that that would give a nice pop of color to the eyes. So I'm gonna take that on my Refer 29. Yeah, that's fun, and use that to line my eyes. All right, let's go back to the face, and I'm gonna be using my Pure Press Base. This is in Golden Glow. And it's, I mean, well-loved, as you can see. And I used the Amazing Base, which is the loose version of this in my last video. And so I wanted to pull this one out and I'm just going to set. Now, I'm also gonna show you, I did the creams before, but I'm gonna show you how they can go after too. Because this is technically a foundation for Jane Ardell. So they did, formulate the sticks to work over this. I can still see them through, but if you wanted to, you can definitely add some more 
on top. It's not gonna mess up the powder foundation. And I know that kind of goes against everything that you hear, like don't put creams on top of powders, but when you have the same company formulating products to be used like this, then it definitely works. And I'm gonna go just a little bit in with the So Bronze One and kind of set that bronzer. And this is the Jane Ardell Dome Brush. I'm gonna use my favorite highlight, even though look at that sheen. I don't really even need one, but I'm gonna put just a tiny bit of the Allure. This is the old one and you can see how well loved it is. I think this is my third one. I have two more of this compact in backup. I'm just gonna put a little bit because it does have a very pretty natural glow already going on. But the new Allure, while it doesn't look the exact same in the compact, it still works as a highlight. To finish off the eyes, my hair, just it just can't stay up. <laughs> I am gonna go back. Where is that palette? There it is. With that same really pretty purple shade I used as liner. And I'm gonna put just a little bit underneath and connect it over here on the side. And then I'm gonna take the Sigma pencil brush. This is the... E30, I'm gonna go in that crease shade from the Cognac palette and lightly buff that out. All right, I'm gonna do my mascara off camera, but I'm gonna be using one of my very favorites, the Beyond Lash Volumizing Mascara, and then we'll be back to finish off with lips. Okay, mascara is on. So now all we have left is lips and fragrance. So these are also new and they are new shades and new packaging for the Beyond Matte Lip Stains. I don't see anywhere where they said, and maybe I'm missing it, change the formula, but I think they have just a little bit, but it's for the better. A lot of the complaints that I heard about these were that they dried up very quickly and they were in a very small package, which that's great and convenient for traveling with it or putting it in your purse, but they dried out quickly and people thought they weren't getting their biggest bang for the buck. Now I use them all the time in my kit. It is my favorite bridal lipstick because it is a lip stain and it does not move, does not move. But these are the three new colors. There is Love Struck, which is a cool pink. This is Brazen and I thought I had the other new shade, but I don't think I do which is a deep plum. Look at how gorgeous that is. Holy cow. For the fall and holidays, beautiful. And then there's Temptation, which is called a melon, but I don't, let me check my kit. I don't have Temptation. I need to rectify that. But y'all can probably guess which one I'm using today. I'm gonna use Love Struck because it goes with the cool eye look and I, you know, it's a nude pink. Need we say more? So look at how easy that was. Like I just put it on the bottom. I rub my lips together very gently and it transferred to the top. Isn't that a pretty color? I'm gonna let this dry down just a little bit. It is a matte product. So if you don't like matte, I suggest using a gloss on top because the color is going to stay. The gloss is going to give it that finish. And pretty much you're only gonna have to reapply the gloss throughout the day. If I put this on like in the very early morning, I might reapply it one time during the day and the color lasts until I wash it off that night. So it has dried down to a matte. I'm gonna take a little bit of pink glossé, the Jane Ardell Hydro Pure Lip Gloss. And even though this looks pink in the tube, it's really just a glossy clear shade with a little bit of shimmer. So that is it for the makeup. Real quick, I'm gonna go into my fragrance of the day. I chose Velvet Tonka by BDK because I have been in the mood for like an almondy, cozier scent. And that is definitely what this is. This has almond and orange blossom, tobacco, rose oil, tonka bean, bourbon vanilla, amberwood, and amorous. I get almond and tonka in this and it is absolutely gorgeous. If you like almond as a note, this is always one that I recommend. If someone's like, I want an almond forward fragrance, this is it because it does have that kind of almond marzipan type of scent to it without being too 
overly sweet. It does have a little bit of an underlying sweetness because it has tonka and orange blossom, I feel like can lend a little bit of sweetness and obviously vanilla. It's not cloying. It's still summer here, right? It's gonna be, what is it gonna be today? 82, which is actually very comfortable, but I still feel fine wearing this. So it doesn't get too cloying. I do feel like it's perfect for the fall season and I am ready, so ready for that season. So I have been pulling out fall scents and I am not mad at that. It smells so good. <laughs> All right, so I will have everything listed and linked down below. Let me know if you have any questions. Hopefully you enjoyed this video. Be sure and like and subscribe before you leave so you don't miss out on any future videos. And I hope you all go out and have a very blessed day.